The Brewman's Arizona's only craft beer radio show, Sans Craft Beer. Oh, what? come on. It must be some silly New Year's resolution. Welcome to the Brewman's on the radio. I'm Mike Russell. He is Rob Hunter each and every week. Well, each and almost every week, gather around a beer of the week. Rob, you have kind of a beer, and we'll explain why in a moment. Why do you have kind of a beer? I have kind of a beer because I am partaking in a challenge I've set upon myself to not drink any alcohol in the month of January. Okay. So I have a beer. It is from a craft brewery, a craft brewery called Boulevard Brewing Company in yes. Missouri. And That's they've right. teamed up with Athletic Brewing out of New York for a non-alcoholic beer called Flying Start. We have the video up for you, too, on YouTube and on Facebook if you want to take a look at it. So uh, I, this is going to be interesting, too, because there's no alcohol in this beer. But it's supposedly going to taste like a beer. Let's Flying see. start. It sounds more like a tragic end. It has no booze in it. So <laughs> let's, okay, I'm, I'm excited for you to uh, to taste it and and give it a try. I too have challenged myself, and uh, we, because Rob set a challenge, so what was I going to do? Uh, I I'm doing no beer actually in January. Mm -hmm. No beer in January. I'm going to spirits. I have a backup plan. Don't worry about it. This week's. Mm, Spirit of the week is Fortaleza tequila. Oh, look at this thing. Oh, it's just beautiful. It looks sexy. It does, right? It's got the cool little cork top on it, a little acorn cork top. I'm all about that. So anyway, cheers, Rob. I'm cheers. actually I actually get to drink. I know. Look at him. <laughs> Next in there with his glass of clear liquor. And I'm here in here with my IPA with no alcohol <laughs> content in it. Feeling That's good okay already. I feel like this is going to be one of the trends going forward. And I'm curious to see. And I don't know this offhand. If any local brewers here in the state of Arizona or in the Valley actually have a non-alcoholic beer, because I went to the store to pick up the crop of January beers, and there was more beers than I even I saw last year. Because we tried Athletic Brewing IPA about a year ago. There's a video review if you want to check it out on YouTube. Type in the Brewman's Athletic Brewing, you'll find it, and it was pretty good. And we tried a couple other ones which we didn't love so much, which we never bothered to put the review out on. But there was Bad. way more non-alcoholic beers in the store this time around than there was last year. Okay. Well, there's, I think there's a lot more beers in the stores than there were last year. I think that period. It doesn't matter, mm -hmm. non-alcoholic or not. And I think that's going to be a trend forward as uh, shelf space is being gobbled up by a lot of the canning that was done during the 2020 pandemic when everyone was shut down. And the only way the breweries could survive their beer and getting shelf space and getting it out as quickly as possible. So I think it's a it's it's a good thing. It's going to be a trend moving forward in the in the new year. Yeah, I think Happy so too. New year, everyone. By the way, Happy New that Year. That is true. It's our first show of the new year. Happy New Yay. Year. Although it feels like it's already been a year. What are we? What's today? Seventh, eighth. Was it the ninth? Yeah. <laughs> right. It feels like it. That's what I mean. I'm like, oh, 2020. Woo! We're like, wow, this year's already come off to a. An interesting start. Let's just let's just say it that way. What what did we see? Somebody said it looks like 2020 was renewed second season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> That's pretty been an interesting start. But look, for, I mean, for the craft beer industry, I think there's there's a lot of things to look forward to. And one of the things is kind of a trend that I don't know excited to see. I hope I'm pleasant, surprised, but I think in 2021 we're going to see what shakes out. So who survived? Who didn't? I don't think uh, the lockdown is going to come all the way through the year. So when the dust does set, we all pop out of our homes and we get the sun like ah, we're outside <laughs> and we get, to, we get to go somewhere. Uh, we're going to see who's open and who's not and who survived, who survived the lockdown. So um, I'm hoping that I'm, I'm optimistic that I'll be surprised, but I'm keeping my expectations set pretty low. And that, I think that's the, probably the best approach in trying to just kind of be even keel about everything and just say, okay, what happened happened. That's behind us. Now we have to be in the moment and see exactly what happens from here. But that's why I think that the beer trends of 2021 are going to be super important because for some of these brewers who maybe have been open in some capacity, you know, this is not just true for Valley brewers, but brewers all across the entire country, there's different limits on capacity. There's different levels of being open and not different hours changes, moving the canning. It's going to be about how do you sustain? How do you grow? How do you introduce new beers or new concepts that people can grab onto that gives us a reason to get out of the house and go pick up the beer? And that is, it's going to be, so wait and see. I know a lot of people are, well, this is what's going to happen. 
industry experts suggesting that, you know, it's our, our, they're guessers is exactly what they are. And when people say that they can predict what's going to happen in, in one way or the other, they're just guessing. So reality is so much different. They usually don't live in our reading. We talk about industry experts. I'm talking about Arizona. I don't care what goes on in California. I don't care what happens in Colorado. I don't care what happens in New Mexico. I don't care. I care what happens right here in Arizona. And if you're not talking to someone on the ground who knows Arizona uh, craft, brew, craft brew industry well, then they're just not, it's irrelevant. I'm just going to wait and see. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of which, just a quick mention that the there's a, an organization called the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild, mm -hmm. and they make all their money on events, most of their money. So they're looking ahead to yeah. 2021. And they're like, we don't know if we're going to be able to have any events. So they have a yeah, big beer fest called the Arizona Strong Beer Fest. It's usually in February. Obviously, that's not going to happen this year because no one's going to come out there. It's you know probably not even allowed too many people. So nonetheless, that's going to be an interesting sort of transition to see what happens to them because they're primarily the organization that's the interface, the liaison, if you will, between the lawmakers and the craft beer industry. So they're the ones that, helped expand capacity a few years ago so that craft brewers could make more beer and still be considered craft breweries. So that's going to be an interesting challenge, probably not just for Arizona, but other states as well, so that if the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild does happen to go away, who's the one that's rallying and lobbying in right. the state capital to help brewers, whether it's with tax policies or brewing capacities, et cetera? And I think that's it, is lobbying. Is what it is. Who's going to lobby? Who's going to represent uh, the craft brewery, uh, craft brewing industry to the state legislators? I think it's a big ask. I, I really don't. I think I think a lot of it, guild does fall. I think that there's either somebody's going to take up the reins and, and head with it, or they're just going to say, look, I represent. I'm going to go to. I have the ability. I have the knowledge. I have the contacts. I can represent us. Everybody, let's get, let's, let's get a Facebook group together. I don't know what, what to do, but... I think it's going. It, I don't think it's going to impact the industry that much, and it is sad. The Craft Brewers Guild has done a lot of good, and I hope they survive this. Uh, but this industry, as we've seen last year, is very resilient and exactly. can and will find a way. And I got to tell you, my first couple of sips of this non-alcoholic beer, not bad. I'll explain a little bit more as we get at the end of the show. We'll rate and review. Mike okay. will rate and review his tequila here. So I am curious if a local brewer can make one that tastes like this. This is an IPA. Tastes more or less like an IPA. So that's pretty solid. And as we move in that kind of direction too, these type of beers, non-alcoholic beers, have lower calories than most others because the alcohol is obviously not in it. Where's so the fun I know, in that? Well, that's the question. The question is that kind of what we talked a lot about in 2020 is that sort of middle ground, that low-calorie beer that does have alcohol in it so, for example, Huss is coming out with a new low-calorie hazy IPA that they're going to release that is like 109 calories, but it still has some content. It's like a day-drinking kind of beer. And I'm like, heck yeah, let's do this. And that's going to be interesting to see is how much you can put into a beer that has low calories. Because you talk about hazy. Hazy doesn't feel or seem like a low-calorie beer at all. Right. But for me, when I'm dealing with a lighter beer, that's an all day kind of thing. That's a crush. That's a crushable beer. That's something I'm, I'm, I'm doing the yard work with. That's something I'm doing the pool work with, or just sitting in the pool. It's something I'm barbecuing with. They're doing a project with it's that kind of stuff. So if it's a lower alcohol content beer, um, I don't know how you can push the hazy, the hazy limit without making it taste like that's not a hazy IPA. So I'm yeah. interested to try and, and they can pull it off. They've done some amazing work. So I'm excited to see what they came up with over there. Because that was, I don't know if it was 2019 when the light lager came out there, Huss light lager, because it, it, when you look back at time, the older you get, the more it blurs together. I think it was 2019 when it came out because it seems like it was way pre-pandemic. That, right. That's a solid, light, locally made craft beer. So I'm going to guess that they're going to do a pretty good job. 109 calories, 4.1% ABV on their low, low, hazy IPA. Hmm. Okay. Be more Rob Hunter beer, but I, I'm definitely going to give it a try because you love the hazies. And uh, like I said, if it's crushable, it hazy and crushable just do not go together with me. So we'll see. Yeah. That yeah. lactose kind of, nah. it's like a difference between Coke and Diet Coke. Like, you know, you're having a Diet Coke. And that's what I'm hoping it's not. Like, oh, I'm having a diet beer. <laughs> that's what they should do. Diet beer. Diet beer. <laughs> Huss light lager, diet beer. I'm not sure. I like that the 10 barrel logo, just plain and simple white can says diet beer on it. 
Yep, exactly right. Yeah. This is the Brewmance on the radio. His name is Mike Russell. My name is Rob Hunter. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're doing our challenges. Mike is drinking spirits for the month of January. I am only drinking non-alcoholic offerings. And we had a podcast we threw out for you this week of which we talked about that. The reason why we're doing these challenges. New Year's, new you. I just had to say it. So join oh. us for that. We're going to play a couple of clips of it right here on the Brewmance on the radio next here on 550 KFYI. They say mindset is everything. So we are working on our mindset here on the Brewmats on the radio. Hope you are working on yours with us. Thanks for hanging out with us. This is where we have open-minded conversations over a beer most of the time. My name is Rob Hunter. His name is Mike Russell. This part of our mindset challenge in 2021 after a very fun, long 2020. So, Mike, we've switched it up. We're not drinking beers on this podcast what are we drinking instead now you are actually drinking a beer ish uh a beer ish so let's start with you you're doing a non-alcoholic beer so you're doing an na beer so technically you have an na beer i went with a different type of challenge i'm doing spirits i am starting this week with uh one of my faves tequila and the fortaleza Fortaleza. So yeah. we have a buddy, Tequila Jim, who is a tequila expert. Yes. At some point, we will put out a video of which he explains all of the. <laughs> no, <laughs> all at of some the point, we will refilm the video that we yes. took five years ago. Yes. That's probably a better idea. And then we can go yeah. drink more tequila and hang out with Tequila Jim. So that's probably okay. the best option. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see what you think about that tequila, which we will review for you on the Brewmance on the radio, which you can catch Saturday nights. 550 KFY if you live in Phoenix at 6 p.m. And if you don't live in Phoenix, you can listen to it live. Just download the iHeartRadio app, type in KFYI, and hit listen live. Me, yeah. I'm drinking a non-alcoholic beer from yeah. Boulevard Brewing Company in partnership with Athletic Brewing Company called Flying Start. It's a non-alcoholic IPA. That's exciting. We'll do the same thing. It's got a cool okay. can with some mm -hmm. paper planes on it. I like the cool can. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I yeah, like Boulevard. Exactly. They brought us Tank 7. Tank 7 is a solid beer. So no, yeah, this, is a, this is a whole other interesting conversation. Yeah, Tank 7 is a good beer. I think that was, that was, I think, early on in my craft adventure. It was one of the froze like, oh, I'll try this one. Because that was when you had certain brands that had national imprints. Yeah. And then you went to breweries. Because even when I moved to Phoenix in 2007, there were not a local, not a ton of local craft bottles at the time in stores. You could get Four Peaks Kilt Lifter, and I think that was really it. I think yeah, Santan probably. came out somewhere along the line because that was the first craft brewery I went to when I moved to Arizona. Was Santan the one, the original one? Mm -hmm. And then it was sort of like a, a almost like a wasteland. Then that started spurring the craft revolution, right? I think in Arizona, I think at the time there were only thirty five craft breweries in the whole state. Yeah, now somebody, somebody saw it and said, this is a wasteland. We should start yeah. a movement. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like how it went down. The history of craft beer in Arizona. But a wasteland. <laughs> yeah, started as a wasteland. And now we have a plethora of amazing beers. But you're so doing these challenges, yeah. Rob. You're doing these challenges because you know, you're, you're talking about you know, challenging your mind, challenging your body, this and that. I'm doing the challenges because you're doing the challenges. So <laughs> I'm just picking my own path as we go along and, and not limiting myself. I'm, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to deprive myself of anything because what we've learned in last year is that, Hey, you know, life's short. Anything can happen at any time. I, I'm going to celebrate life and keep going. So I'm not going to deprive myself of anything. That's why I switched to spirits. And I have a whole new list of things to do all the way throughout the year. So, uh, But all of them are going to be fun. They're going to be enjoyable. And I'm going to uh, be experimenting and learning new things. That's interesting because that's a, that's a mindset in of itself. Because one of the things I actually talked to our buddy Joe about at some point in 2020, I said, you know, my fun bucket is kind of low right now because we're locked down. A lot of places are closed. And even still, is it worth the risk of going to a certain place? For, for example, Lady Brewmance and I, we love to travel. So we usually do one international trip a year. Or if we're doing like, we'll do three international trips out of five years or whatever. So we've done Italy. We went on a, a Danube River cruise. We went to Japan. We had planned to go on an African safari at some point. But that all got shut down. So that was a big part of our fun bucket. So we weren't going to travel to, say, Kenya to go on a safari when there are so many limitations because of COVID. Yeah. We weren't even going to go to, like, San Francisco or whatever, which we, I don't know, I, I 
San Francisco. Eh. Been there, done that. So yeah, times. exactly. Yeah, okay. But, it, but I mean, yeah. you're going to go to a place and you're going to go to where restaurants have limited capacity and only half the things are open. So we basically hunkered down just like most people and we stayed in the state of Arizona. Some so dude that dropping was a deuce right outside the restaurant. It's not fun, San Francisco. No, Don't no, do it. No, it's not at all. There's no fun anymore in San Francisco. It's all it's all over. It's been there, been there, done it. There's a couple of good pubs. Yay, pubs everywhere. You like a good pub. That's true. There are good, good pubs everywhere. Mm -hmm. Correct. Exactly. Downtown Phoenix, fantastic pubs. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we did instead. So we basically stayed home, and I spent more time in my house. And I was thinking about this. I'm like, okay, so how do I make things? more fun of everyday life. So if traveling is not a great option at the moment, so what else can you fill the bucket up with? So I'm curious to see, Mike, what you're going to be coming up with through the entire year. You learn new skills, challenge yourself a little bit, and have fun while doing it. It's going to be fun. There's going to be no, like I said, I mean, I'm not, I'm loving what you're doing. The cool thing is you're going to have a beer. You're still having a beer, so it's fine. It's just not, there's not alcohol involved. That's totally cool. Um, I, look, I, I just want to have a good time. I, I just, it was, I want to show my family because the head of a household, I want to show them this, look, we can still have fun. We can still enjoy life. We don't have to just keep sitting, you know, mope about what 2020 was and how it, it changed things. You just got to make the best of things and find what can be fun. Yeah, exactly. So one of the reasons I'm doing my challenge is because I've never really stopped and thought, Hmm, I shouldn't have this beer now. I'll just grab a beer and drink it. So what I'm curious about, at least in this month, because I'm going to do a different one every month. So next yeah. month, I'm going to not have any dessert or I'm going to try to. So I basically picked several things that I do automatically because I really want to examine why I do them automatically. Why have these things become habits? And just see what I say to myself. Because I also, in the course of the year, I, I wrote a communication program. I literally like wrote a book on communication. Just because it's, it's a really important skill that we don't really consider a skill. So I started digging into it, and I found that a lot of that is how we communicate with ourselves. So as I'm writing this course and wrapping it up now as we speak, I was like, how do I talk to myself about my habits? Because either I talk to myself with language in my head or my body does it for me. My brain sends my body a signal like, oh, I wake up in the morning, you have coffee. So at some point, Mike, and you know me and caffeine, I've done the energy drink thing. You love coffee. You're drinking coffee throughout the day. At some point, I haven't picked which month yet, I'm going to do a caffeine-free month just to see what happens. Ouch. I'm going to have mad that's headaches. Pain, that's, yeah, that's a painful first few days. That's that's for sure. But I've, I've done that. I've, I've kicked the caffeine for a month before. It's it's interesting. But you know, when my doctor said, no, caffeine, coffee is pretty good for you in moderation. I don't understand who moderation is, but <laughs> in moderation. And uh, she says, good diuretic. And so I was like, all right, fine. I'm, I'm going to go back to drinking coffee. So it, there was some health benefits there. But I'm interested to see your journey in that. But it's just if it's fun for you, and that's what I want to have. I want that, you know, I mean, you're my boy and all. I want you to have some fun with it. I don't want you to always just keep denying yourself. But if you want to talk about self-talk and what makes me have a beer, I go, uh, I want a beer and I, you know, <laughs> inside, inside my head, it goes, you know what, dude, you've been, you've been working hard, pal. Why don't you go have a beer? You do, you're doing good, buddy. You, you deserve that IPA. Go make it happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, There's other I know the self-talk and I accept the self-talk. I know exactly that I can, I will convince myself of anything. I am really <laughs> good at convincing myself to, you know what, you know, you've been on this rowing machine for about 10 minutes, man. I think you give it another two. And I know you wanted to go 20, but two, you know, something you did some extra steps yesterday. So, yeah, I think 12 is good today. Yeah, I'm yeah, great exactly. to talk about about anything. Hey, that's it. But that's the interesting part, because I normally don't. So I want to see if I can. I just want to see if I can survive and say, OK, this is a good alternative. This non-alcoholic beer. As long as you can find ones that taste decent, let's see what happens. Now, the other part that I'm interested to see about this non-alcohol challenge, Mike, is we obviously know alcohol changes your body it, physiology, right? So you have alcohol coursing through your blood and you feel a little bit looser. So I'm curious to see if I can find that state because I'm less inclined to care about a certain amount of things, right? I'm just like, just let it go. Just have some fun. I'm curious to see if I can find that state without the booze. So okay. that's kind of also what I'm experimenting with. So I hung out with our buddy, New York Rob the other night and I didn't drink. And he was drinking a couple of beers and had a good time. So I'm like, okay, I didn't need the beers in that moment to have a good time. 
Now, we are going to be doing a couple of things coming up in the next few weeks. We're actually going to attempt to brew a beer, which we've never done on our own. We did it at Oso, which is a local restaurant slash brewery. They have, I think, four or five locations now. The main one in Indian School allows you to go in there and brew beers. And our buddy, Matty Flanagan, brewed some awesome beers with us. Like, we had this idea. He's like, all right, here's the concept. This is what we're going to do. See you in a week. So we went in a week, and then three weeks later, the beer comes out. It's phenomenal. But we've never done it on our own. So we're going to do that in the month of January. So yep. we're going to be brewing beer, and I'm not going to be drinking actual beer with alcohol in it. So I'm curious to see how tempting that is. Because you'll be drinking beers, as you should. But I'll be sitting there going, here's my non-alcoholic beer. I can't well, you'll be drinking it. spirits. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So oh, come on. I, I got the little uh, Jameson cold brew to go in my cold brew coffee. Fantastic. Yeah. We'll, we'll review that one maybe next week just for fun. Nice. Yeah, but I, I don't understand in a lot of cases why this has to happen at the beginning of the year. Like as this push moves from 2020 to 2021, what is it about that calendar switch? Because it's just another day. Sun's doing the same thing. Earth's doing the same thing. We're still rotating. We still got the same jobs. We still got the same family. We still got the same friends, same, same, same clothes, same cars, everything's same. And then there's this calendar switch. And but the 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 thirty first is the same as the first. They're the same, 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 same twenty four hours, same everything. I've never really understood the new year, whether it's resolution or challenges. I've never really understood that lifestyle because if on November eleventh I decide new year, I'm going to do this. <laughs> why don't why don't I start it on November twelfth? You see, or when does the diet have to start on a Monday? I don't understand the calendar and the mindset. So I think that's, that's one of the things that that has always confused me. I play along. Mm -hmm. I think it's fun. Like you wanted to start your challenge in January 1st. So I started my challenge on January. (laughs) I still have beer in the fridge, dude. Don't judge me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, You got to clear it out. There's no question about it, but it is, that is a very interesting question. And and I, I guess I'll go back and I'll say, why did I start it on January 1st? I think because I didn't think of it until sort of the end of December. And I was like, oh, okay. Or at least the mid-December, it kind of dawned on me. I'm like, oh, I want to do some kind of challenge. Like, what do I want to do in 2021? I was like, hmm, let me embark on a bunch of challenges. So there's a physical component for it as well. So it's working out every day in the month of January. And that doesn't mean I'm going to go run eight miles every day. Some days I'll just do some chill at, chill yoga. And so far, so good. I'm, what, nine days or seven days or eight I days into that. this? Yeah. So far, so good. So I'm a week into it. I'm like feeling pretty good. So, you know, we'll see how far I can push myself and what I learn along the way. Because I think ultimately that's why I started at the beginning of the year. Again, not thinking about it till December saying, okay, I want to see how far along in this 2021 year I can kind of push myself and what I can learn about myself. Because getting back to those, I'll call them excuses, what we say to ourselves to allow, I'm just really curious at examining those excuses that say, hmm, I allow myself to do this because of this. And whether that is drinking beer or whether that is snoozing. When I wake up in the morning, I'm a big snooze guy. I hate it, but I do it. So I'm trying to mentally challenge myself not to snooze because I know when I snooze it, I'm more tired after snoozing it. And I know all those science and research backs it up, yet I still do it because it's a habit. It's a challenge at one point to not do that. Yeah, I, and I and I get it. I just think that we're we just batch things. I don't know, if, lack of a better term, it, that we just like to segment things. So yeah. it seems like the you know twenty twenty one when the when the calendar hits the first January first, it's a new batch of three hundred and sixty five days, and then if it's the if it's monthly, it's a new batch of thirty to thirty one days. So except for February, I got totally screwed in the whole thing. But the, <laughs> but it's it's just it's something that we can say. Okay, we're going to start, and there's a start and a finish. That's really the only thing I can think of, but I mean that that can happen at any time. It's just I, I, I'm not I'm not judging. We can talk about judging. I'm not judging the people that said New Year's resolutions or challenges because I'm right here with you doing the same thing. So mm-hmm. it's it, it just it's always been just it's something that I found is very interesting. Well, and you know me, so let's rewind the clock. And the reason I'm even on this journey to begin with is because a lot of people call it self help. A lot of people call it personal development, but it, it really is about examining yourself in how you live, at least for me. So it started for us. Amy and I went to a conference and I want to say this was might be four years ago this month. 
So we went to this conference and this woman is named Mary Morrissey. So she's a personal development expert, used to be a minister, like really, really interesting lady. And she said something in this conference because I was like, whatever, I'll go because I support the wife and all that stuff. But I was like enthralled because this woman said, your thoughts are not your own. And I was like, what does she mean by that? And as she explained it, and the more I thought about it, some of the things that we all have in our own heads are not true. There are stories that we tell ourselves or other people have told us. I'll give you an example. So if I've been told my whole life I'm disorganized, and people still tell me I'm disorganized to this day. So is that true? Or is it just a story that I have in my own head because so many people have told me I'm disorganized? I just I'm really don't have story in your own head because you're a post-it Jedi, dude. I've never seen anyone. And by the way, I didn't know people still used post-its <laughs> until I worked with you for like every day, every day. And then I'm like, wow, post-it's a thing. You are a post-it man. Mm -hmm. that's, so that's how I keep track, right? So that's organization to me. Like I just need yeah. a certain system that works for me. So exactly. that story in my head, I dismantled it. And I was like, whatever. People could tell me I'm disorganized. And now, because I know that the thought is just a thought. It's just someone else's opinion that got in my head that I believed. And then I was like, I don't have to believe other people's opinions about me. And I'm like, that's very interesting. So what opinions do I have of myself that I no longer have to believe? So for example, we all have, I guess I'll say, limiting beliefs about our own talents, our own abilities. There's some version of probably I'm not good enough in our heads, I would say probably 80% of people suffer from some, from some version of that. And that belief really stops so many of us from achieving and pushing our full potential. Because one of the things I do have a belief in is that we're born the same. Our brains do the same thing. I told you this number the other day, Mike. Our brains process 400 billion bits of information up to every second. Sight, smell, sounds, things we see in our periphery and it it filters it all out the brain is all amazing everybody's brain does that we just use our brains a different way and we tell ourselves stories in a different way so that's where this journey started long story even longer that brought me up to this point to see what other stories i can uncover that i tell myself in these challenges okay well i'm, I'm excited i'm excited to be along in the journey with you i'm just going to say that outwardly and i would say more traditionally uh, and this might be the most fun ride of your life. And I, and I have that hope for you because I love you. I want you to have that. Uh, mine's going to be more fun. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> but that's awesome too. Because my focus, my focus isn't really inward. It took me 45 years to make it this way. It's going to take me another 45 <laughs> to unravel it. So I'm, I'm, I'm having fun at my peak because uh, I think if, if you do like a 90 year trajectory in life, which would be amazing to live that long, like, dude, I'm right up here. I'm, I'm, I'm at halftime. I'm yeah. going to have a good time. It's going to be a halftime show to beat the band. Let me tell you, it's going to be like a, it's going to be like a JT and, and, uh, and Janet Jackson halftime. You know what I'm saying? Hey now, hey yeah, now, let's fun. go all Those in, baby. Along the way. <laughs> exactly. But see, I love that because that's such an important part of life too, that so many of us ignore. And I think that that was a big challenge in 2020 for, I, I can't even guess a percentage, but I'm going to guess 75% of the world had way less fun in 2020 than we've ever had. So in 2021, adding some fun and having some pillar moments of fun, whether it's tinkering around the house or trying a new project, or maybe you want to paint or you want to get good at, I don't know, gardening or something, something that you can find to be fun. Absolutely. I love that idea. And I think I need yeah. to incorporate that probably in one of my month challenges too is, okay, I need to have as much fun in a particular month as possible. So maybe like June sure. or something, I'm going to do like four or five different things. Don't say June. You'll just come. You'll see my list and you'll come along. Trust me. Oh, you'll, yeah. you'll, 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 it'll be it'll be more of a February, March thing. You're not going to wait till June. As long as it starts warming up. Because it edu because here's the deal. I mean, you're growing and having fun. Having fun doesn't mean you're not. It's mindless. Having fun doesn't mean you're in the gutter drunk on some because you're only going to drink absinthe for a month. I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's not like that. It's not that kind of fun. I'm not trying recreational drugs for fun. I'm doing there's different things that you can grow and build yourself and do and have a good time. Have a good time doing. Yeah. And no, I love that. And I think that's exactly right, because I just mentioned this communication program that I worked on. That was a lot of fun to do because I like to learn about things and I like to try to see patterns. 
So I, I did get a lot of enjoyment out of that, just not in the traditional way. Like I'm going to go skydiving or I'm going to travel to a foreign country and tour it for 10 days. It's just a different kind of fun because ultimately, I think if you look at fun, it should be fulfilling in some way, shape or form. So as long as something is fulfilling, it can be fun, especially okay. if you're learning something new. So if you're like, all right, Rob, we're going to go fish. We're going to go get in a kayak and we're going to go out and fish. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Because I tried that in San Diego, and the kayak uh, hit me in the face when I was getting out of the kayak because the wave. Mm -hmm. But it was a fun time. That was a great experience to do. Absolutely. I'm like, I would love to do the challenge again because I didn't catch any fish. There you go. See, we can do mm -hmm. this. I just, I just don't think we need to block it into a year. I, I really don't because in 2022 we should be doing the same thing. In 2020, exactly right. we should be doing the same thing. So here's the deal. I think, I think that instead of resolutions or challenges, it should be habit development. Yes. I think if habit development, if you take 21 days to form a habit, I think that's it can fit in that month time frame if you have a couple lapses, and that's totally okay. But I think habit development is a lot better than setting a resolution or that kind of thing. Yeah, I like it. And then you add in learning new habits that are mm -hmm. beneficial, that are fun, that experience camaraderie with, all the things that makes life worth living. I love that. I think that's perfect. And that's essentially when it boils down to what I'm trying to do with this month's challenge is, you know, establish when I drink, it will be for a reason, not just cause. And then maybe when I just want to just cause I can just cause so you long can. as I know the reason. Exactly right. Like, ah, OK, I'm in control, not my urges. I want to control my urges versus my urges controlling me. I say give in. <laughs> and that's what makes this so much fun so that's here's what we're right. gonna do mike's drinking tequila i'm yep. drinking a non-alcoholic beer we're gonna rate and review these on the brewman's on the radio so if you want to catch what we think of boulevard brewing's flying start non-alcoholic ipa brewed in partnership with athletic brewing company we will tell you about it saturday night 6 p.m 550 kfyi and mike what's the tequila you're drinking again fortaleza fortaleza tequila it's tequila más fino, buddy. Of course it is. I mean, it's a better tequila. Yeah. I, I, but it so, doesn't have that. That was actually the Corona. That's actually the Corona tagline. This is, uh, this. Uh, it does say Echo in Mexico, which means nice. uh, I think that it comes from Mexico. I, I think you're right. I think you're, and it's a Blanco tequila, correct? Yes. Yes. Blanco. Yes. I mean, I'm that, the that, means, that means something. Yeah. That, that's clear. <laughs> yeah. I don't speak because Spanish, I think, dude. is that the one that's aged <laughs> the least? Because there's certain ones that's like, Blanco is not aged or only aged for six months. And then the next one is six months. And the other one's like a year or something. Here's the deal. When Tequila Jim was teaching us this, you were paying attention. I wasn't. We were in an area that had his gun safe. And I was just True. staring and playing with his guns. And you you were learning about tequila. I just knew mm -hmm. it tasted good. <laughs> Which is why he's on this challenge. Do you know what you're doing next week? Are you trying uh, different spirits throughout the month? Uh, yes, I actually I do know what I'm doing next week. I'm going to do uh, one of the Jameson, uh, keeping the beer theme, I'm going to do one of their cask mates. So either the Stout Barrel Jameson or the IPA Barrel Jameson. I don't know which one Ooh. just yet. Yeah, Nice. I have had the cold brew Jameson. Very, very good. It is very so good. good. You Especially mentioned really the cold brew coffee. Forgot about it. It's like match made in heaven right there. I know. So tune in to the Brew Match yeah. on the radio. Saturday night, 6 p.m. If you don't live in Phoenix or the Valley, you can join us on the iHeartRadio app. Just download that, type in KFYI, and just hit listen live when 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time comes. So we don't change the clock here in Arizona if you're listening outside. So if you're on the East Coast at this time of year, it would be 8 p.m. for y'all. If you're in mm -hmm. California, California, IA, if you're in Washington, anywhere in the Pacific time zone, we'd be on at 5 p.m. for you. Cinco. Exactly. See, His name is I'm Mike learning. Russell. You are learning. It's because you're drinking tequila. It automatically right. comes the Spanish. I know. Spanish. Yo say. Spanish language. <laughs> no say. <laughs> He's Mike Russell. I'm Rob Hunter. Thanks for joining us on the Brewman's Podcast. We'll have more coming at you next week. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow us. Make sure you check us out on YouTube. We got some video reviews. And if you want to watch the podcast, you can do that as well. We have it up for you on Facebook and YouTube. So until next time. 
Cheers, everybody. It is a brewmance on the radio. Thank you so much for being here. He's Rob Hunter. I'm Mike Russell. Each and every week we gather around a, well, this month, a beverage of the week. If we've been talking as we've been talking about our challenges that we have bestowed upon ourselves. Rob is going non-alcoholic for a dry-ish January. And uh, Rob, you're doing a near beer. What are you drinking, Rob? I'm drinking the Flying Start from Boulevard Brewing Company in partnership with Athletic Brewing Company. So Athletic Brewing Company only makes non-alcoholic beers. They partnered up with Boulevard Brewing in Kansas City, Missouri to make this one. It is an IPA. I will tell you all about it here in just a couple minutes. I'm going with the uh, tequila because I've gone with spirits this month. So the Fortaleza Blanco tequila, which is uh, which is fabulous. Can't wait to tell you all about it. Now, we just need to crown them. We just need to crown them king, not the king of beers, the king of beer promotion. Bush and Bush Light, they just do it. They they every single month they come up with something crazy to do, some crazy giveaway, and it it just keeps them in the national spotlight. It keeps people talking about their beer instead of just walking down the beer aisle and seeing it. Even even at that, I remember uh, it was last year at some point. I was walking down the beer aisle and I saw the bush uh, the bush fifteen pack thirty rack whatever the heck it was, and it stood out because it was Hunter Orange and had this big like this big deer on it and it was a big promotion that they were doing it just stood out from the rest this is their latest as they're offering one dollar off of bush beer for every inch of snowfall that your state receives this year i, I mean just because i thought oh well we're totally hosed but then like, oh my gosh we have flagstaff we actually have snow we do and they're doing this to 32 states and totally. washington dc between now and march 28th up to 15 bucks but it's a great way for them to make news. And this is what they do. So they've taken a portion of their marketing budget, I imagine, and they put it towards these sort of cool giveaway type, money off type, interesting ways to promote their beer. And it works because we're craft beer guys. I wouldn't drink a Bush beer, but I love the fact that they do this. I'm like, it's very creative. It's very fun. And that's what beer drinking is supposed to be. When done responsibly, it's supposed to be fun. You know something? We've given Bush a lot of promotion on this show. We've talked about all of their promotions. I wouldn't mind having a Bush beer. Let's do that in February. I wouldn't mind that at all. Why not? I mean, just give uh, give credit where credit's due. Whether you like something or you don't, whether you like someone, whether you don't, whether you like somebody's affiliation or you don't, you always have to give credit where credit's due. If they True. are coming with it, give them some give them some love. Yeah, exactly. Why not? And, uh, you know, this is probably one of the beers that we all grew up drinking. So when you start I can say I've beer, never had one. I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever had a bush beer. That's a good I that's a good question. So I can't now judge that it. I think about it. But that's what I mean. Why judge it now? Maybe it's nice and cold. It might be fantastic because some of these light beers, if they're really cold, man, they go down easy, they go down smooth. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, be judgment is my uh, is my spiritual gift. So <laughs> I'm I'm totally all about judging early, but let's give it a try. Why not? But yeah. I but okay, I will prejudge all day long. Prejudge helps set my bar. I don't think prejudging is just wrong at all. I think prejudging is part of our DNA. So it if is. I see something, I'll I'll judge the book by its cover. I'll just go, ooh, ooh, bush. I say, uh oh, yeah, no. And so my bar is set so low. Might be a damn good beer. Who knows? Yeah. All right. Let's go do it. We're gonna try it out in February. Once we get off these challenges, the spirit challenge for Mike, the non alcoholic for me, we'll give Bush beer a try. It's gonna be fantastic. What right. about this? Maybe something else we should try is Jim Beam because yeah. they are looking for people that are giving up beer. Smart. Again, you're trying to trying to grab some marketing share, right? Some market share. Beer drinkers, a lot of times dry January is a thing. A lot of people are like, well, beer's got heavy calories, got beer guts. So Jim Beam's like, come over to us. Here's what Jim Beam's doing, and I, and I appreciate this, is they are uh, making fun of beer snobs. They're grabbing the market, the segment of the market that's put off by beer snobs, that, that judge people for drinking a certain type of beer and don't drink the beers that they and aren't into barrel age and things like that. Their first commercial I saw this week, and I was laughing out loud. I thought it was hysterical. It was a man that walked into a bar, and he was uh, basically didn't know what to order. And he was confronted by three different people that are just as stereotypical as you could possibly be for every craft beer segment. And then he just got fed up with it and he just said, give me a high a beam and highball. So that's yeah, he, he orders Jim Beam and everybody was all shocked and, you know, yeah, all appalled by that whole thing. And he's just happy as it gets. And yeah, they're going after it. 
they're, they're making fun of the craft beer industry. And once again, you have to give credit to too. If you're like, oh, well, I'm not going to drink Jim Beam, then they're going to make fun of the craft beer industry. Okay, cool. Don't. I give credit where credit's due. It's smart marketing. And I, I laughed. It was entertaining. And the highball comes in a can too, so it's easy to buy. And this is what's happening with a lot of these companies is they're making it easier to do. So it's a pre-made cocktail in can form. I think there's another one, Cutwater Spirits. I've seen a couple of their commercials. I've seen their cans of basically a cocktail recipe. And I'm like, that's a great way to do it because now you can have a cocktail in a can. You don't have to go to the bar and order it and drink it. So that was such a smart move, but not only by Jim Beam, by Cutwater Spirits. And I don't, they're out of San Diego. I don't know if they have national distribution or if it's just kind of here in the southwest or whatever but the fact that you can now you're not limited to either drinking beer or making your own cocktail at home here you go buy this this six pack of highball boom you're ready to rock and roll i actually have the Drinkworks home bar now that thing is i mean you got to get used to it kind of figure out how it works so when you're when you're off this kick robbie we'll, we'll come over here and start playing with this thing because it's it, you just put basically it's like the uh, it's by Keurig, so the, you put the pot in, and it just pops out like an old-fashioned, a margarita, nice. a mojito. It's got alcohol in it, and then boom, there you go. You got a drink. It's interesting. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's kind of – I like to call the the time we live in the convenience era where everything is super convenient. So whether it's the fact that we don't have to hunt our own food, that's kind of how it started, to the fact that you just go to the grocery store. Here's food for you. You don't have to what do you mean you hunt your own food. You don't have to is what I'm saying. Uh, most, yeah. most of us don't. Yeah. So that was really, you know, and then you go back to agriculture ways. But now we have Amazon. You can order something and it could be delivered today or tomorrow. Like, yeah, okay, great. We have monthly subscriptions for certain things. Then Amazon ships us every month. And you're like, this is amazing. And it's Amy said to me one day. Like it. Yeah. Oh, it, is. Long. it is. Lady Brumis was like, hey, we have to go to the store. I'm like, why? Let's just order it. It'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> like, I don't want to go. I literally don't want to go to the store anymore. I love going to the store. That's like one of my little Zen things. I love grocery shopping. I know it sounds ah. funny. I do. I really do. Every Sunday morning, I get up. Well, I get up before everyone anyway. My family's a bunch of sleepers. I get up in the morning <laughs> and I exercise and then I go out and I uh, I go to the grocery store and I get stuff to make for breakfast and I make everyone breakfast, but I get my lunches for the week and I just kind of mill around and just take my time. And yeah, it's my, it's my little Zen time at the yep. grocery store. Well, especially on a Sunday morning, because it can't be that busy that early. Because I know a lot of people do errands on the weekend, and I used to ar I, not argue, but I, you know, Amy would be like, "Let's go to I'll do all the errands." I'm like, I just wasted four hours of a Saturday yeah. going to stores. I'm like, I would rather go on a Monday after work, get it done, and then it's done. I so live on. A, I live Saturday. by a retirement community. Can you imagine what Sunday morning looks like? Oh, yeah, which is another crazy thing to me. If I'm retired, I'm never going to a store on a weekend. I'm going, what is the least busy time yeah. to go to the grocery store? I'm going at that time. Oh, the total wine by my house? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be the most successful total wine in the state because let me tell you something. It's that that community is a party community, and they celebrate that stuff. Yeah. Ah, yes. Just made me think of something which I won't share yet because I don't want to give the idea away in public until you and I work on this idea, Mike. That's another story for another day. Let's get to our reviews. We are not drinking beer in the traditional sense this month on the Brewman's on the radio, but we do like that you're hanging out with us because, look, got to be open-minded sometimes. Try things. What we say, we're open-minded conversations. Mike's drinking spirits, tequila. Right. I see that the tequila is almost gone, Mike Russell. I was, saving it. I was hoping to get to the dang end of the show for the love mm -hmm. of grief. This is the uh, the Fortaleza together. This is the uh, Blanco. And, and uh, as you can see, I've uh, I had some tonight. This is uh, a good amount. There. <laughs> uh, so I was getting to the bottom of my pour, my very large pour. And I, I tell you, sip the whole way through. There's when it comes to tequila. So, you know, there should not be fruit involved. There should not be salt and licking involved. There should not be this pucker face involved. Not at all. It should just be a nice pour, sip, sip, and you're just going it, to, it, it bites you on the front end. I really like it. It's peppery. It's got that little spice to it. It's just warm going down. It's a wonderful, wonderful drink. It's wonderful. And tequila wise, I'm going to give this an easy seven. I like it. There's a few more that I'll, I'll say it review through the month nice. that, uh, that I like a little more, but this is, uh, this is a solid seven for me. Seven, actually, you know, maybe this is seven and a half. I like bumping it up. Reason. I like it. All right. So, my non alcoholic beer is called Flying Start from Boulevard Brewing in partnership with Athletic Brewing. It's an IPA. Honestly, I like it. It's got a good taste to it. 
It's got a lightness to it, but yet he still a hoppiness it. bitter to it. I do like it. I would drink this again. And this is what I'm curious to find out over this course of this challenge is, am I going to find non-alcoholic beers I would drink in a normal drinking situation? This is one I would say yes to right now. Mm. So pretty impressive. I'm going to give it an eight in the non-alcoholic beer category because Dang. I don't have much to compare it to. So I'll start with an eight and then right. we'll kind of go from there. See what we got for next week. Oh, Until nice. next week, we got to get out of here. But you can always check out the Brewmance podcast. You can subscribe any podcast platform that you listen to. We have a YouTube channel. We're available there for you. Brewmance.beer on Facebook. Please connect with us. Let us know what you're doing for challenges. What are you drinking? Let's hang out, at least virtually, until we can hang out in person again. So we are very much looking forward to that. He's Mike Russell. I'm Rob Hunter. Thanks for hanging with the Brewmance on a Saturday night here on 550 KFYI. Wait, hold on. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>